Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar. Um, here, World Raven would like to welcome you to our webinar on how to avoid corrosion in outdoor installation. We will be beginning our webinar shortly in just about two minutes. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to jot down that question under the questions tab on your right. And we will be answering that question um, at the end of the presentation. My name is Bruno. I have over seven years of experience in the construction industry. I was showing this before, but I think no one could, could hear me before. Um, for all those uh, years that I've been working, has been in this kind of industry to support companies like Hero Warhaven, uh, where we do uh, what I've been helping designing and uh, coming up with solutions for MEP and uh, anchored support system design. I'm a fixing systems trainer. My background is in civil and structural engineering. So today we'll have 45 minutes. Um, sorry if it has <laughs> covered some kind of issues, but now I think it should be okay. Um, we'll have a Q&A duration of 15 minutes. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what is corrosion, how we solve the problem, and we'll give some examples and references. So uh, I'd like to start by showing our Hero or Even Academy a short video that prepared to uh, that covers all of these points. Uh, we, we are now, we, with this, we try to have a learning center for our industry that includes webinars like this, seminars, training sessions, on-site coaching, and much more. So, uh, Hero Warhaven, we are a joint venture company between the UAE-based Hero Industries and the Warhaven Group that was launched in 2015. Now, Hero was founded here in 1980 as sales companies and manufacturing units in multiple locations across the India, Middle East, and Africa, Asia, and USA. We employ now more than 1,100 uh, employees from uh, more than 20 nationalities. And Warhaven Group is a European company based in the Netherlands, originated from J. Van Valhaven in 1942, has production and sales companies in more than 15 countries in Europe, Asia and USA, uh, more than 1,000 employees, more than 60 patents and counting, so we have a lot of history. A bit more about ourselves at a glance. We have manufacturing plants in UAE and India, sales companies in the African Middle East, India and Asia, and we are a a complete manufacture of fixing system solutions from pipe supports to vibration control. Quality is something very important for us as well. So we are ISO certified, RAL specified, an MSS member, and we design solutions to meet the most demanding quality standards. We have FM approved and UL listed products. We have VDS and ETA certification and marking, and we comply fully with RAL for a pipe support systems design. We offer a vast range of solutions for the construction industry. Then we can place, I would say, in two major groups, certified installation systems that comprise of pipe fixing systems, channel fixing systems, rooftop supports, vibration isolators, seismic bracing, fixed point sliding devices, and high performance mechanical and chemical anchors. Mechanicals such as concrete screws, through bolt, drop-in anchors, chemical anchors such as uh, epoxy or vinyl ester or 
different kinds of, uh, of uh, anchors for different kinds of applications. Our technical support services, we help your projects in many ways. Um, we offer you a vast range of products under our brand name Diamond or Evan. We design anchors that are suitable for your application in a safe and efficient way. We do field plot tests to verify the performance of the various components of an anchoring system. We uh, do uh, design and uh, customize and tailored support solutions. And we perform seismic bracing studies and design the necessary support. And all of our designs are made in 3D with an extensive beam library to ease the integration with the project models. We have decades of experience in all types of projects. We have been helping uh, transforming vision to reality since a long time ago. Uh, we do everything from landmark buildings, transportation networks, high-rise towers, and iconic mega developments such as what we are expecting our country to, to host. Unfortunately, because, because of all of the situation we cannot do right now, but we are helping transforming this uh, huge idea into reality on Expo 2020. Now, as a small company and family-operated business, uh, we try to focus ourselves with a, a set core of values and we aim to be the most preferred brand in this segment and we'll only get there by being the most innovative company in this industry. We want to set the standards and we want to pioneer new and smart products and techniques. A large part of this derives from our core values, which we value very much. We uh, want to think smart, we want to be a game changer, creative mind, we want to think out of, out of the box. Fair play is uh, very important for us. Transparency as well, honest, open-minded, clear mind. Open communication, reliability, commitment and trustworthy, and we like to challenge ourselves to be unique, innovative, and to never give up. This is what defines us as a company, this is what defines us as a group, and this is what uh, directs us to be a player in this market. Thank you for, uh, for keeping up with me with all the, the technical issues. I think now everything is solved. So let's go a little bit more about what is corrosion and how it affects mechanical installations. So nowadays, our modern air systems demand highly engineering solutions. So buildings nowadays, a building is something, it's, I mean, uh, a building is only something if you have a operating network of supporting systems. And each discipline and project has different demands. For civil mechanical, which is our core, it's very important to have corrosion resistant systems that are capable of bearing any type of load. Uh, the, the several elements of electrical, plumbing, HVAC and firefighting systems need to be installed in a safe way. And all of these need to, to have a high service life and be highly reliable. So corrosion impacts a lot of that. Um, this is a dangerous and costly problem. And as I said here, it can collapse bridges, can break pipelines, can start fires or can flood bathrooms. So uh, it happens, unfortunately it happens a lot of time. And corrosion is a common result of electrochemical reactions between materials and substances in their environment. When you think about corrosion, most of the time you'll think about something like this that I'm showing here. On the left, corroded rebars, and on the right, surface corrosion, which is very common. I would say it's the most common type of corrosion. And you can see that it affects the system in, a, in, a, in great ways. On the left, this would be something very dangerous to, to leave uh, untreated. So corrosion can be simply put as a destructive and unintentional degradation of material caused by its environment. This is a galvanic process by which metals deteriorate through oxidation. It's the natural thermodynamic tendency to convert refined metals to a more stable form, such as its oxide, hydroxide or sulfide state. For example, when exposed to air, Iron rusts, silver tarnishes, and copper and brass acquire a bluish green surface called a patina. You see that on statues, for instance. And of the various metals subject to corrosion, iron is by far the most important commercially, and um, roughly a fifth of the world's annual production of steel is just towards replacing damaged items. And of course, consequently, the development of methods for protecting metal surfaces is a very active area of industrial research. Corrosion can also happen when metals are placed under high stress, which can cause the material to crack. And chemically, corrosion is a redox process. Under avian conditions, the oxygen of most metals is thermodynamically spontaneous, with a notable exception of gold and platinum. Uh, the result of corrosion of metallic iron, uh, which is rust, 
basically iron is oxidized to uh, Fe2 plus at the anodic side of the surface of the iron, which is often at an impurity or a lightness effect or something that happened to the surface. Then oxygen is reduced, reduced and electrons are transferred from the anode to the cathode through the electrical conductive method. This is what happened and over time you see that the, the surface of the metal starts to degrade more and more and you'll see elements being placed on the surface which we call rust. Now why is it important to think about corrosion? Safety, function and service life should be a part of every project, as we know. And in order to address these parameters, consideration must be given to the design, choice of materials, construction methods, active and passive surface protection, maintenance, analysis of working conditions and environmental factors. In elements designed to guarantee safety, this is even more important, I would say, fundamental and crucial. Unfortunately, there are several examples in recent history of accidents caused by a lack of corrosion prevention, and sometimes these accidents are fatal. I'll show you some examples where this lack of um, prevention caused uh, serious uh, damage. This one, um, you'll, you'll recognize this as one of the rails or the guards that are common found in uh, in tunnels or in bridges. And this example I'm showing here, this was um, from a, a, a viaduct and this rail failed. And it failed when a bus that was carrying around 40 people tried to stop by leaning against it because the, the brakes of the bus just stopped working. There was a lack of maintenance. And usually these kind of barriers, they are tested as suitable to, its, to withstand crashes like this. But since it failed due to some basic prevention of corrosion in the bolt, the bus driver just leaned against it and eventually it failed and it uh, was pulled free from its base for more than 100 meters. The result was this. As you can see, the bolt is uh, very corroded due to water, the icing salts, dust deposits, the general absence of maintenance. And this was basically a critical design flaw. This was a design flaw as well as the material that was chosen was not the right one. And the correct practices for corrosion resistant insulation are fundamental. Even when you consider uh, materials that are very resistant to corrosion, such as stainless steel, which is something that can corrode over time as well if the conditions uh, for that are met, and depending on the environmental conditions or the safeguarding practices of corrosion or even the alloy type, Stainless steel can corrode, and this, in these two cases, it actually corroded and it led to, uh, to a, a failure. The left one, this was a failure in an in a indoor uh, swimming pool in Switzerland. The rooftop uh, completely failed due to, uh, to tension cracking over time. On the right, in 2001, another swimming pool, another roof in a swimming pool in the Netherlands corroded. Luckily, the second one did not cause any, you know, any loss of human lives. Unfortunately, the left one did cause, and this, this is something that has been studied as an example of why we need to choose the right kind of alloy and the right kind of um, design to prevent this from happening again. So how does corrosion affect uh, the system? It affects in several ways, it reduces the mechanical strength, it uh, leads to equipment downtime and thus it's not generating uh, but on not working as it's supposed to, to do. It needs more maintenance, of course, and it leads to a diminished value of goods. As you can see, for instance, that car, you need to, to do a complete overhaul just to be able to, to do something with it. And the differences in the environment have significant impact on corrosion. So for instance, high humidity increases corrosion um, and humidity, uh, atmospheric corrosion only takes place when a thin moisture film is present on the metal surface. In the absence of humidity, most contaminants will have little or no corrosive effect. The period in which a moisture film is present is also called time of wetness. And as a commonly used rule of thumb, the time of wetness is defined as the period in which the relative humidity exceeds 80%. So high humidity will lead to a greater time, greater time of wetness, which in turn will increase the corrosion. High temperature leads to an increased chemical reaction rate so an increase in the re uh, chemical reaction rate will also give an increase of the corrosion because the deposit will be faster and the, the degradation of the material will be faster as well. And this is especially true at constant relative humidity levels. 
The atmospheric salinity directly impacts the corrosion rate. Uh, chlorides have multiple detrimental effects on the corrosion of metals. In particular, these are a decrease in the saturation humidity because the presence of salts facilitates concentration at lower relative humidity values, thus leading to longer periods of wet metal surfaces. As I said before, the high humidity, this is one of the causes that why um, saline environments or marine environments is <clears throat> are very detrimental to, to corrosion. High concentration of pollutants lead to higher corrosivity, um, especially when you think when you think about this, you think about uh, let's say petrochemical plants and a lot of sulfur dioxide on the on the atmosphere. It also leads to a lot of uh, corrosion or increases the rate of corrosion as well. Then salt water is more corrosive than clean water because in maritime atmospheres the main source of chlorides is the seawater, and it contains mainly sodium chloride accompanied by some calcium and magnesium chlorides. Acids affect still more than alkalis. One example that you can think, I was showing before the corroded rebars. When the, the rebars were covered by concrete, which is a very alkaline medium, there, there is almost none, I dare to say no corrosion at all. Only once it's exposed by, by uh, some destruction of the surface of concrete or if the cover is removed by some reason, then you'll see it starting to, to corrode more and more and starting to, to destroy the concrete more and more. Now, corrosion develops in many forms. Of course, some have a bigger impact on the material integrity and uh, uniform corrosion or surface corrosion, this is the most common kind of corrosion, but we have several others. We have uniform, pitting corrosion, which is a very localized and very destructive corrosion. Uh, crevice corrosion, which which happens uh, frequently in uh, tight surfaces, uh, sorry, in tight gaps between, let's say, a fastener and a plate. We have intergranular, which is at the microscopic uh, uh, level of uh, corrosion, stress cracking, and galvanic corrosion. So, um, as I was saying, pitting uh, corrosion, this is something that's very hard to predict, and this is. Uh, a localized form of corrosion in uh, which either a local anodic point or more commonly a cathodic point forms a small corrosion cell with the surrounding normal, normal surface. So it tends to develop this kind of pits that will just uh, tend to progress in several ways, vertically or sometimes horizontally as well. And usually it's caused by a local break or a local damage to the protective oxide film or the surface protection treatment for the metal. So this is very dangerous because sometimes you cannot see and it, it's already progressing a lot and then it just cracks. Intergranular corrosion, this is something at the microscopical uh, structure. It occurs along or adjacent to these grains, to the grains of the metal, and it seriously affects the mechanical properties of the metal while the bulk of the metal remains intact. So it's something that's very hard to predict, something that's very hard to, to see, and uh, it just leads to catastrophic uh, cases. Stress cracking which was actually the reason for those um, rooftop structures to fall in the, the indoor swimming pools, because this is a result of the combination of tensile stress and a corrosive environment. In that case, um, a very strong effect of chloride. And uh, stress corrosion may result from external stress, such as actual tensile loads, or it can result on the expansion and contraction due to the temperature changes inside the pipe, outside the pipe, inside the building, outside the building, all of this. Then galvanic corrosion, this is something that we all know. This is when you place uh, two dissimilar metals in uh, contact with, with each other without anything to isolate them. And uh, in this situation, the less noble metal tends to degrade at a much faster rate than it would if there was no, uh, no contact between two different metals. This side, I'm showing you how the pits in, uh, in pit and corrosion, how they develop, what kinds are there. This is according to ASTM G46. Uh, there are some variations in the cross-sectional shape. You have narrow deep, you have elliptical, you have subsurface, undercutting, horizontal, vertical, these kind of things that you can, might not see right on at the surface level, but it might um, go on and uh, keep on corroding the material in, uh, inside. Then, of course, you have gravis corrosion, which I was saying before. And this refers to um, corrosion that is happening in cracks or crevices that's formed between two surfaces. So if you have a fastener 
um, that are uh, joining two plates and usually there's a there's a tiny gap unless you you do something to, to protect it and the differences between uh, oxygen inside and outside will lead to corrosion activity inside that gap on stress corrosion cracking this is very important to keep in mind the contributing factors so we don't have cases like which well like I showed you before um, Especially for uh, stress corrosion cracking, you have two types, or well, let's say two types of uh, stress corrosion cracking. You can have one that that's, that is uh, connected to load and stress, a susceptible alloy, and the corrosion environment. You'll have this, a normal, let's say, stress corrosion cracking. But there's also another one, also that is um, caused by load and stress. This time material hardness structure and external internal hydrogen, which is called hydrogen assisted cracking. So hydrogen assisted cracking, this is caused by the diffusion of hydrogen atoms into the metal. The presence of hydrogen in the lattice weakens the mechanical integrity and leads to crack growth and fracture at stress levels below the yield strength. So when I'm talking about stress corrosion cracking, this is not something to be overlooked because you design, you design a structure to a certain uh, yield strength. And because of this, you don't know exactly when, you don't know exactly how, it will fail because of this situation. So corrosion, you are, you are designing a very sturdy structure and it might be affected by, the, by corrosion if you don't take it into account. Welding, of course, can also be a contributing factor to accelerate localized corrosion. This is very common, um, or this is a cause of the intercrystalline corrosion or uh, intergranular corrosion. Uh, and this attack takes place at a quite narrow path, preferentially along the grain boundaries in the metal structure. And this is very common when certain grades of material are kept at the temperature within the range of 500 or to 800 for a considerable time. So if you are welding stainless steel, uh, and depending on the type of um, grade of stainless steel that you are welding, you'll have chromium-rich carbides formed that result in chromium depletion at the grain boundary. So then you'll have corrosion starting from the grains itself and expanding until the surface, and then it will crack. So uh, to go back a little bit about on uh, the topic of galvanic uh, corrosion, um, when you have two dissimilar metals and you have an electrical conducting connection and you have a common electrolyte, you'll have galvanic corrosion. So one of the two um, partial reactions, anodic metal dissolution and cathodic oxygen reduction will take place and it takes place almost exclusively in one metal. You see here on the picture on the right, you have um, a fastener that's connecting copper and an aluminum plate. Copper is a much nobler metal, so it will not corrode, but it will accelerate the corrosion of carbon steel and the aluminum plate. So you'll see heavy corrosion in the, in the joints between copper plate, aluminum and heavy corrosion, but carbon and aluminum, they are not that far away from the, from the electric potential of each other. So there will be a slight corrosion, but not that much. The, the issue here will be the fastener will fail near to the copper plate um, zone. Now, galvanic corrosion is common in fasten applications and how can we prevent it? So, as I said before, you need two types or two very dissimilar metals for this to happen and you need a common electrolyte. If you use an insulated to isolated two metals, then you disconnect the electrical joint. So then you won't have galvanic uh, corrosion. Of course, if you use similar metals, then it won't happen as well or it will happen at a very uh, low rate of corrosion. If you can control the electrolyte from connecting two metals, it will also protect the, both metals. Or if you coat the, the anode or the cathode, it will also remove the electrical connection. So as you can see here on this galvanic series, you'll see that uh, types 304 to 16 stainless steel, they are very passive, so they are um, very noble, so they will not corrode by itself. But in contact with, let's say, zinc, zinc corrosion will be very accelerated. So this is one of the reasons that if you want to connect two types of dissimilar metals, the most noble metal should be the fastener, which is um, explained here, or it's shown here in this table. Uh, for you to prevent, it's, it's always a good idea to, to connect similar metals or the fastener should be the, more, the most noble metal. So uh, stainless steel can be connected to pretty much anything or almost everything, but most of the, the anchors are 
Electro galvanized or optical galvanized, so it needs to be taken into account when connecting different types of materials. So, if you use a hot tip galvanized or electro galvanized anchor on, let's say, an aluminium plate, for instance, uh, outdoors, for instance, for connecting uh, cladding elements or facade elements, then you will face this issue. You will accelerate the corrosion of the fastener. It's a good idea to think about ways to protect or use different kinds of materials. Now, how is the corrosion performance of any element assessed? Uh, there are standardized lab test methods, such as ISO 9227, which is the very common salt spray test. The ISO 16701, the cyclic corrosion test, which is over time. The ISO 6270, humidity test, so the, the specimen will be placed in a high humidity uh, ch uh, chamber or a machine. And you have the Kessnick test, which is for sulfur dioxide to test the heavy concentration of pollutants that we usually find or typically find in um, industrial settings. Then, of course, you have outdoor field tests, which is an analysis of corrosion on a longer time frame. And it helped predict the behavior on similar environments and provide us with data to select suitable insulation systems. Um, I can give you some, some a little bit more of uh, what is the salt spray test, for instance. So the samples are just exposed permanently to a saline fog made from a 5% sodium chloride solution, usually. And the salt spray test is not directly representative of corrosion, but it represents what would be the behavior of the, the specimen or the metal or the element in a high chloride concentration atmosphere. So if you wanted to test something similar, what will happen to a certain type of grade of stainless steel in a pool setting, if you're using it to, as a support for, uh, for some installation, then this would be a good enough test to, to predict this behavior. Now, how do we, as Helio even solve this problem? Basically, there are two ways, two paths to, to design materials or installations or systems that are corrosion resistant. So we can take the path of material or we can take the path of protection with coatings. So I'll just start now with the material itself, which is stainless steel. So this is of course the most common and the, still the most effective solution for, uh, for that. And we have an extensive range uh, from, uh, from uh, pipe fixings, pipe clips, anchors as well, sliding devices to control corrosion and the thermal effects on insulation. And this is one of, one of those that we solve this issue. Now, what is stainless steel? Stainless steel is a steel that is alloyed with at least 10.5% chromium. This is what defines a stainless steel. And stainless steel is very corrosion resistant because of the passivation layer, which is caused by the oxidation of chromium. So usually the higher the content of chromium, of course, this is not only the chromium that will be uh, a factor for uh, for the corrosion resistant properties but if you have higher concentration of chromium you'll have typically a more corrosion resistant uh, steel and the the oxidation of chromium then forms a thin oxide layer and then that surface itself protects the steel <clears throat> of course this is only true after you exposed stainless steel to oxygen then alloys can be made containing titanium, nickel, molybdenum, copper, niobium, and other elements. There are several grades depending on the chemical composition with different levels of stability. The most common contains around 18% uh, um, chromium and 10% nickel. The amount of specific elements in the steel alters its corrosion properties. For instance, if you have higher concentration of molybdenum, usually you have a grade that is more resistant to corrosion. And uh, Carbon will affect properties such as weldability and mechanical properties such as the, the yield strength as well will be all connected to the concentration of different um, elements. Stainless steel is classified in five main groups um, and we, uh, we define it according to its crystalline structure as austenitic, ferritic, martensitic or duplex steel. You can see here on the table on the left uh, the characteristics and properties of stainless steel. You have things like magnetic response. Usually people tend to think that um, stainless steel 
should not react to a, to a, uh, to a magnet, but depending on the type of uh, alloy you can have. So duplex, for instance, which is a double alloy phase between uh, austenitic and ferritic, since you have a ferritic phase, it will react to uh, a magnet. The steel grades of stainless steel and associated corrosion performance you have uh, 303, for instance, 304, 316, 316 316L, which are the most common types of stainless steel. And this... So, uh, sorry, um, we have the most common types of steel, and all of these will have a different kind of corrosion resistance class. Now, this corrosion resistance uh, class and factor, this is uh, computed um, from, um, from the, the standards and it depends on the severity of the environment. For instance, the CRF depends on uh, three factors, which is the risk of exposure to chlorides from salt water or the icing salt, the risk of exposure to sulfur dioxide, and the cleaning regime or exposure to washing by rain. So all of this will affect the corrosion resistance class, which then um, this is something to be associated with the project or the installation in a project. And then from, from that, one will have to select an appropriate corrosion class um, and steel grade and uh, steel kind of stainless steel. So that was about the material. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the other way to, to do uh, some corrosion protection, which is by coating. So as the corrosivity increases, the protection requirements increase as well. You will typically need more corrosion, more coating thickness. And as you move along, the ISO Corrosivity categories C1 to C5 or extreme. You'll see that typically, let's say for a, a hot dip galvanized, you'll have 35 to 100. So the coating life, depending on the, the type of class, will uh, will lead to different types of um, um, years until the first maintenance or the actual service serviceability life. So the corrosivity categories you have from C1 to C5. Um, the C1, for instance, is a very low corrosion level. This is typically found or typically prescribed for indoor and uh, some outdoor where you have dry or cold zones. C2 represents a corrosion level low. So unheated buildings or atmospheres with low level of pollution, mostly for uh, agricultural and rural areas. You have C3, medium, which uh, are typically uh, defined for production rooms or urban and industrial atmospheres. C4 high, especially with high frequency of condensation or atmospheric environment with high pollution. C5 very high, so near, very near to the ocean or high pollution from production processes in tunnels or mines, for instance. So these are the ISO classes. And these ISO classes typically are only applicable for zinc. So steel, single steel has a different kind of um, of classification, so one cannot say that one is exactly equal to the other, although with the typical environments you can predict that uh, a C zone will be C5 and will be, it need also a 5 uh, corrosion resistance for stainless steel. So zinc coatings are one of the options to apply on steel surface. Uh, one of the processes is electrogalvanizing, which is a process in which a thin layer of zinc is deposited on the target metal surface. The electrical current is passed through an aqueous solution that contains zinc ions, and it usually leads to a, a coating of 5 to 15 microns. This, um, we we do it, or we, we propose this kind of products for indoor environments, typically, or it's, if it's something very cold or very dry uh, that you do not expect or you're not near to the sea, which is not usually the case here, to, to be placed uh, outdoor. But most of the pipe clips, some anchors as well, will have this kind of coating. Then for channels, uh, typically there is a process that's continuous galvanizing and this is uh, the sheet is applied, uh, the zinc is applied to a sheet that is drawn continuously through a bath of molten zinc. We can achieve a specific uniform thickness. Usually this coating thickness is 20 to 30 and you'll, uh, you'll find this kind of um, protection in our range of channels, our uh, light duty, medium duty, um, medium to, to heavy duty as well, some kind of applications, um, you'll have you'll find this kind of protection. Then moving on, as we move on to the classes, so C1, C2, C3, etc. 
you'll have also hot tip galvanizing product, galvanized product. So this is a process that uh, we apply zinc to steel by immersing in a zinc pad, usually at around 450 uh, Celsius, uh, degrees Celsius. And this is usually applied to the entire finished product. By this, we can achieve a typical coating thickness between 35 to 100, although very, very thick uh, zinc coating is not very common, not, not very easy to do as well, but the, depending on the, on the condition, depending on the application, depending on the need, it's possible to do it and it's possible to offer this as well. And this is used for all elements designed for outdoor application or indoor, where we can expect an atmosphere, a very aggressive atmosphere. This um, we apply to our max heavy duty channels, as well as to all the elements connected to it. Now, I want also to talk about something that only we offer. This is a very unique solution to uh, high corrosion protection. This is what we call the Ultra Protect 1000 system. This is a surface apply treatment that is designed for corrosive environments up to C4 class. So C1 to C4, and if we go here a little bit back, this is for spaces indoor, spaces with high frequency of condensation. So something that we expect to be very humid all the time and with uh, a certain degree of pollution process as well, pollution. Or on the outside, uh, where we expect a substantial effect of chlorides, polluted urban areas, industrial, some, some coastal as well, that uh, is not common to be you know, completely uh, exposed to what we'd say as a C5 class. This is what we can offer as an alternative and in most cases better, if not better than uh, hot tip galvanized, even if you have a very thick coating and I'll show you later. Uh, we, with this system, we offer an extensive fixing system. We apply this uh, protection to um, a huge number of products in our line. This uh, allows us to, to offer a smooth uniform finish. This is something very peculiar and uh, it looks good something very visually appealing so it can be exposed some installation can be exposed and this is designed to effortlessly withstand a salt spray test of a thousand hours now this is relevant thousand hours up to to five percent rust because if you compare this same test to a typical hot tip galvanization you'll see zinc plating will last about 80 hours hot tip galvan galvanized products will last let's say 300 to 600 hours and our system will last a thousand hours so with this kind of protection, we can actually bridge the gap between hot tip galvanized and stainless steel. So depending on the application, of course, it needs to be studied, but it can give a considerable increase in protection, even if you compare to hot tip galvanized products. So this is something very relevant, and this is something that we can uh, offer on, uh, on your products. And uh, it can sometimes double the protection that you would find in a hot tip galvanized uh, product. And this uh, treatment is also very uh, passive. So it can be combined with other kind of uh, zinc plated electrogalvanized, even hot tip galvanized products without any issue. This table just shows here a little bit of a comparison between, uh, between products that were treated with PUP, so uh, Ultra Protect, and uh, zinc plated, pre galvanized, hot tip galvanized. You'll see on the 96 hour mark, no treatment and uh, hot tip galvanized as well, already showing some signs of corrosion. If you move on to 280 hours, so even not even 300 hours, you'll see that it starts to corrode heavily some product. When you move to 600, basically the hot, even the hot tip galvanized is severely affected. You can even see that the stainless steel on some areas is already showing some corrosion, while BUP is still proving very effective. The system includes clamps, rails, rooftop supports, and accessories. We, uh, we are very confident in the product. We give you outright a 20 year warranty of, uh, on this product, on this kind of system. And uh, we uh, issue some, um, some certificates, some warranties. You can even find on the handouts. I, I believe that this one was uploaded so you can, we can take this and you can uh, consider this as uh, our proof of warranty and our, our guarantee that the product will uh, work for these conditions. I'll show you a design case where we use this. This was to uh, to build a food industry production plant. So if you think about food, this case was for a chocolate factory. You'll see 
that you'll find equipment that is constructed for a lot of from a lot of materials you can see from carbon steel aluminium stainless steel plastics all of this uh, and corrosion can affect all of this in a different way and because this is for a, for a food industry you will need uh, purity you need sanitation you'll need a lot of chemicals in place you need a degree of uh, of safeness in the environment as well and for the systems itself it can be quite aggressive so usually the food uh, the food quality the food industry or the, the the type of plants that prepare these kind of products they usually go for stainless steel so we work with uh, with the designers with the contract with with, with all the um, all the agents in in this and we found solutions with our BUP system. Now, another thing that we were connecting pipes, first of all, heavy pipes, and pipes subjected to thermal movement. So we needed to find a way to connect uh, heavy elements, such as um, fixed points, as you can see in the image, connecting the pipe. Then they would be connected to different levels of cables, uh, not cables, sorry, different levels of channels, and all of this needs to be very uh, corrosion resistant. So the only way for, for, for this to be able to do would usually be with A2 or A4 stainless steel. And with BUP, you can actually find an alternative solution to this, which is much, um, much uh, economical as well compared to stainless steel. And uh, since we have a full system of that, it's very easy for us to, to deliver and to manufacture and to support the, the whole process of construction. The installations that we that we use or that we design, it range from heating, cooling, steam, ventilation, and we use products like the heavy duty clamps, uh, threaded rods, expansion devices, several types of rails, and beam clamps, as you can see here. Moving on to some uh, application examples and references, we we've been doing this and we've been doing um, this kind of. Um, designs and studies for a long time. So we have a wealth of experience in this. I'll show you some. I will not show all of what we've done, but I'll try to, to show several types of examples of what we've done and what kind of solutions you can, uh, you can, you can uh, or what kind of solution we can design with this kind of system and with all our, our um, corrosion protection systems. So our solutions for, um, for all applications, all load application and environmental exposure comprises of uh, our channels. So light to the application rapid rail, medium to heavy duty rapid strut and max heavy rail, which can uh, come in uh, pre-galvanized, hot to galvanized, uh, ultra protect system, stainless steel as well. Depending on the need, we can, uh, we can help you. Then of course, channels and pipe supports. Um, rooftop supports as well that are non-penetrative uh, non support solution, noise isolating as well, and heavy duty anchors. This is part of our system and our considerations on corrosion protection. Some uh, examples where we've used all of this. This was a case of a rooftop heavy piping in an industrial setting. This was quite near to the sea, so we needed some, uh, some degree of corrosion protection and it needed to be able to carry these enormous pipes and very heavy, so we designed this with our max and our uh, rooftop supports as well for a non penetrative solution. This was, uh, this is an example of an industrial setting outdoors. Another example will be for heavy piping on an industrial process uh, factory or a plant, also exposed to the, to the environmental factors in this situation, we use a mix of uh, hot tip galvanize and BUP to support heavy equipment and ducts in outdoor environments. Depending on the weight and the, on the load patterns and on the conditions, we uh, we work with you to try to come up with the best solution. In this case, we use the mix between our max heavy duty profiles and our um, medium duty rapid strut profiles. In high humidity production rooms, indoor. We also studied, uh, we have several of these cases. This, in this situation, we use our max channels because we needed to support very heavy piping and equipment. This is uh, an interesting case, uh, also an uh, inside product, indoor production plant, where we've used the mix between our max, our um, fixed points, our cantilever arms, 
our uh, sliding devices. All of this, we have several different kinds of um, surface protection and the different kind of um, elements to be to be connected depending on solution. We can work with all of them to give you proper support. For heavy fixed points as well, uh, so to control the thermal expansion and contraction on all types of weather conditions, this was uh, a fixed point that is going to be um, in constant contact with uh, with water, so high humidity environment as well. In this situation, we use um, our BUP products to support uh, rooftop equipment and uh, and machinery. We designed this uh, solution as well. We tell these solutions for you using the best products that we can that we can find. In this situation also we use a combination of our BUP uh, Yeti rooftop supports and Max. And some, sometimes you you face some unusual situation or problems to solve. In this situation, we we had to design a bridge that needed to to uh, bridge a gap of uh, around 21 meters, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this would be place outdoors, and this would be also for a, an industrial environment. And we use a combination of our max, our cables, and our uh, rapid strut. You can even do pathways, walkways. You can even build stairs with our with our system. So um, this is something for for easy access to equipments or machinery. This is a situation like this. We can we can easily support you and we can easily help you to find the right solution for your for your installation. For tunnels, of course, this is uh, where something where the corrosion resistance is fundamental. In this situation, it was for a sprinkler pipe in a tunnel, road tunnel, and we had to uh, to come up with a solution that would be easy to apply, easy to fix, and with uh, strong corrosion resistance. Even for outdoor um, solar or for solar panels as well, we can we can find a solution in this situation. For all types of weather, we can expect uh, that the system will be uh, will be exposed to. In this in this kind of situations. Um, can either go with uh, with our BUP or stainless steel. In this situation, we found out that the best solution would be to go with our BUP. So the system is very versatile. The corrosion resistance is very high. So depending on the conditions and we study with you, we can find always the best one to, to propose. Now, just uh, also consider some good installation practices to minimize the risk of corrosion. And uh, one should always design the system in a way that there is no possibility of water or waste to be stagnating around metal products. For example, you can use um, our Yeti or Ursus rooftop supports to lift the system and then no water will be uh, to, will be in, the, in constant contact. Then one should always make sure that one water runs off freely because it's never a good idea to have continuous uh, you know, exposure to water because the corrosion material, corrosion protection is only a part of a good installation. Uh, practice is also fundamental. Then cutting elements, unless the, the elements itself are special in a way as some of our uh, rapid struts, in this case the DS5, which contains self repairing properties, unless you use something very specific, it's never a great idea to cut um, and you should avoid it as much as you can. So try to, to predict what needs to be done and uh, how to protect in the event of something like this happening, which then you can use something to, to cover the rail hand ends, for instance, or to prevent the accumulation of dirt or water inside the rail, cover the, those as well. So thank you. Um, I can now move to the questions. Uh, I think, yes. Does anyone have any question on the, um, that I could try to answer for you? Um, um, there's one question. It's from Naeem. Um, Max profile is in HDD. Do we have galvanized box channel available in other square profiles? Do we have galvanized box channel available in our portfolio? 
that's the question. Oh, I can't. Let me just open this one. Okay, so uh, the governor uh, is box Max profile is a box channel. This is my default. Okay, so the governor is a Any other question I, I, could, uh, I could, uh, could answer you? Could answer you? Um, there's another question. Is BS Ultra 1000 like galvanized? Galvanized, galvanized basically. So if I'm getting it right, um, our 1000 is like a galvanized. Well, yes and no. This is a, a type of surface protection that you that you could compare to a galvanized product, although this is not a normal galvanization. This is a unique uh, applied protection to the surface. Do you have PUP 1000 anchors, namely through ports? Our true bolts and our um, our anchors are mainly um, electroplated or stainless steel. Although, if necessary, yes, we could offer in BUP. Need extra protection in C5 condition. I think they're asking if we do need extra protection in C5 condition. I don't believe I could understand exactly your question. Need the extra protection C5 condition? Yes, uh, C5 is very aggressive to to the material itself. So uh, you should be very conscious of what kind of material you are specifying or designing for this kind of condition. It needs to be either usually stainless steel and depending on the grade of stainless steel, you need to, to select appropriately. for Ultra 1000. Well, Ultra 1000, this is not commonly um, proposed for uh, C5. So, um, yeah. sorry, uh, this is applicable for up to C4. So C5, one, it will be uh, convenient to, to select another kind of, uh, of system, usually stainless steel. And depending on the application, uh, one common one common solution for marine environments, for instance, would be T one six L. So with the one with low low, uh, low carbon. We have, another, we have another question. Can you please tell the process of PUP coating on metal? This is uh, this is uh, similar to uh, it's not painting. Uh, I cannot tell you exactly the process, but this is not the same process as galvanizing. The price between BUP and DGG, it's very comparable. I have a question. BUP and HDG, the price is very comparable. Uh, in some cases, uh, depending on the HDG thickness, BUP, it's, it's even uh, more economical, I would say. We have another question. Can you do customized thickness of zinc layer when we do the hot dip galvanizing? We have a consultant who is asking for 100 micron. In this situation, for 100 micron, I would, I would see first of all 
what is the exact application and where is the, the system going to be installed. Um, and then you would see if actually you would need 100 micron because 100 micron is not very easy to achieve on any, any kind of surface. This is something that's going to be very thick and not very easily achievable. And usually the price will just jump if you, if you need such thickness. In this situation, probably would be more interesting to find something else. The, the thickness of the UV layer, this is a very thin thickness. That's why I was saying this is not exactly like uh, coating in zinc. This is a very uh, thin layer. Although the way that this uh, surface protection is designed and applied, it can show much better results than HDG. And uh, in some cases, very comparable or equal to stainless steel. Thank you for your question. Does anyone else have a question? Can you offer the full range of accessories, both SDG and BUP? Yes, we can offer the full range of accessories in both HDG and BUP. Uh, although in BUP it's much easier to offer because uh, the way that we set up the, the system or the way that we, we set up the, this solution, we, uh, we have a, even a bigger, a bigger range of accessories in BUP than in HDG. Um, we believe actually that HDG is something useful. I'm not saying it's not something useful, but there are better ways to, to protect systems. So we, uh, we believe that our ultra protection, even with the results that we have and the way that we guarantee and the way that we, we give warranty about this product, this is a much better solution to, for corrosion class. Because usually HDG, you'll see that something above a C3 class, HDG, unless you have a, a very, very um, thick zinc, coatness, zinc coating thickness, Unless you have that, it will not be a good solution. And with BUP, you can easily go up to C4. We give warranty on that. Can we use BUP channels with AGT accessories? Uh, yes, we can because um, AG, uh, because HDG is a zinc coating and the BUP is very passive uh, to zinc. So there will not be an effect of galvanic corrosion between the, between the two types of materials. Are there any more questions? We would be uh, answering questions for another 10 minutes. Um, there are two handouts attached to the uh, presentation, so you can download the handouts if required. And uh, of course, we'll uh, upload this uh, presentation to our YouTube channel as well. So if you if you want to, re to revisit it or if you want to to uh, take a look again, then you can access that. Is there any more questions? All right. Um, thank you all for attending. Uh, we, we will conduct another uh, another session, um, another webinar, actually, in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, I hope to see all of you by then. Um, if you have any more questions, just uh, contact us directly. You can contact me. One second. You can contact me through my email, uh, bruno.s at here, whatever, or directly through our academy email to for more questions or if you need any more qualification or if you would like us to to visit you and talk a little bit more about our corrosion, corrosion protection uh, products or how we design this and if we need some support, 
we can uh, we can uh, get in touch get in touch with us and we can uh, we can then schedule something um to answer your question omar naeem uh, the recording of the webinar will be on the official youtube channel thank you all for attending hope to see you next time